What's up everybody, it's James Q Quick, and today I wanna to show you how to add a search bar in JavaScript to your application. In this case, we're gonna use sample information from the Harry Potter API because I'm a big Harry Potter nerd. So that's what we're gonna do, we'll go ahead and dive on in. All right, so I uh, just wanna share uh, basically the starter code here. So this is what we have. We've got a search bar. This search bar doesn't do anything. So that's what we're gonna actually add the functionality for. Then we look down and we've got a list of maybe 50 different Harry Potter characters. Uh, so let's just break down what I've got here. It's just HTML, CSS, and JavaScript. Nothing super fancy. Um, let's start with our HTML file just to kind of see how this is laid out. We've got a characters list down here. So it's a UL and then we'll populate that thing here in a second, or I'll show you how we populate that in a second. And then we've got a div for the input here inside of it. And uh, we wrap it in that div so that we can add this little search icon, which is not perfectly aligned. So we can fix that in a second. So that's all the content that we have in the HTML. Then if we jump over to the JavaScript, this is where the cool stuff happens. Uh, when the JavaScript file gets loaded, it calls load characters, which calls the Harry Potter characters API that you can find here. All right, so this is the information that we're getting back. We could do a bunch of different things like Patronus and whether or not they're a student or staff, the actor, uh, all that kind of stuff. But we're just doing name, house, and then an image. All right, so we get all that information. Then we pass that information to a function called display characters. Now, this is a cool trick that I've learned in just doing vanilla JavaScript stuff is you can take a list of objects, you can do a map, look up ES6 map if you've never, or actually it's ES5, I think, uh, in JavaScript to do a map. So what it's gonna do is for each character object, we're going to convert that character object to this string. And this string obviously looks like HTML. This is similar to React uh, in terms of how you do JSX. Anyway, we're dynamically generating the HTML, which is then being rendered by setting the inner HTML of the characters list. So that UL gets populated with all of this information and then that's how you see the information displayed below. So that's the project that we're starting with. Just want to give you a little bit of background on the code. Uh, you'll have access to all this, so don't worry about uh, having to type all this out. You can copy, you can get all this from the code pen that I'll link in the video. All right, so we've got this stuff working. The first thing we want to do is we just want to track when the user is typing into that search box, we want to get a reference to that search box and uh, and get the input as they're typing it in. So the first thing is if we look in the HTML file, we've got the, uh, not the character list, but the search bar, the input search bar has an ID of search bar. So we can get access to that uh, by doing a search bar and then document get element by ID and type in search bar. So you can type all that out. Also wanna show you something pretty cool. I've got a snippet in VS Code called get ID. And this is every time I wanna get an element by ID. Uh, notice these two different cursors pop up and then I can type search bar and it populates it in both. If you're interested in that snippet, I wanna to try to populate my snippets page. So jamesqquick.com slash snippets with useful snippets like that. And if you go there, you can find this get element by ID. You can add that right inside of VS Code and then you can have access to that snippet as well. Regardless, you can type that thing out and you're not missing out on anything. So from the search bar, we want to then add a search bar dot add event listener and we'll do on key up or just actually key up, key up and then we'll pass it a callback function. Let's give some space here. So we're adding an event listener. Basically this function is gonna trigger any time uh, a, key, a key is pressed down and then it's released. So the released aspect of the key is when the key is going up. And inside of here, it's gonna have a parameter of E. So let's just log out, console log E and see what that thing looks like. So let's uh, open up our console over here. Let's open that, give it a little bit of breathing room. You can see I'm logging out the Harry Potter data in that array. So we'll leave that for now. And um, if I start typing in here, looks like nothing is happening. So that's not good. So let's go back and take a look and make sure we have all this stuff looking right. Let's start with uh, logging out the search bar to make sure we're getting a, a correct reference to that. Looks like we are. Okay, so that's good. Oh, and I think I, I, think I just misspelled this. I think it's just all lowercase. Key up like that. Now let's try again. Okay, there's our event. So. 
we've got a keyboard event in here. If we dig into that, we can see, what am I looking for? The target, which is the search bar. And then on the target, we can get the value of what's inside the bar. So S-A-D-A-D -A -D in this case, obviously matches the content that's in there. So uh, let's just log out e.target.value. Okay, so let's uh, do this again. As I'm typing, notice I'm getting all these logs with all the different letters in there. That's exactly what I'm looking for. Now we want to use whatever gets passed in, into here, whatever the user types in, we want to be able to filter the items in here based on uh, does the name contain this string or does the house text contain this string okay so let's uh, let's start with the one thing we need to do is we need to have a full list of all of the Harry Potter characters at any given time so instead of uh, getting our Harry Potter characters and just creating a variable here let's get a reference to them up here so let's say let HP characters and it'll just be an empty array to start. And then we'll update that variable with all of them. I don't need to log that out here anymore. So what's going on here is now we have our Harry Potter characters variable outside of this function, which means we can then use that Harry Potter characters array to then search through. So uh, we're actually gonna use it inside of the key up. So inside of here, we're going to say uh, HP characters. And then we're gonna do a filter and so for each character, we want to uh, decide whether or not this character still belongs in the list. And the way we do that is we can look at the character dot name and we can check, does it contain the search target? So let's just assign this to a variable. So uh, const target maybe, or const uh, search string, maybe a better one. So we've got our search string and we want to filter all of our Harry, Harry Potter characters to check, does the character's name contain the search string or does the character house contain the search string? All right, and what we're gonna do is we'll actually just return this. So return that either the name contains the search string, the search string is in the name or the house is in the search string or the search string is in the house. So we're going to then uh, copy this to a variable called filtered characters. All right. So we do our filter. That's going to return a new array of all of the new uh, filtered characters. And now let's just log out filtered characters. Okay. So we'll start that. We'll see if we made any mistakes in here. Let's type in H. Uh, contain is not a function. Let's make sure we got our characters. Let me make sure I'm looking at these characters right. All right, let me print out these characters again. So they do have a name property. So I think instead of, oh, not contain, but contains. And sometimes it's contains and sometimes it's includes. I think contains is strings and includes is arrays. But we'll have to see about that. Nope. All right, let's see includes. I think that might be the one we're looking for. There we go. All right, so if I type H, notice I've got this new list here that's being printed out, and it's got Harry Potter, Hermione Granger, Cedric Diggory, and Rubius Hagrid, Rubi or Horace Slughorn. So th most of these make sense. Cedric Diggory doesn't, the name doesn't contain an H, but the house contains an H in Hufflepuff. So that's why he's still showing up in the list. If I type this to a G, how many have G? Well, there's probably uh, lots of, let's see see who these characters are harry potter uh harry potter hermione ron minerva neville most of these people are actually in gryffindor so that's going to show up let's type s l y for slytherin all right so this should show us just people that are in slytherin that looks right if you know your harry potter you probably know this is right so it looks like our search is working now what we need to do is take these filtered characters and then display those so what we can do is we can call the display characters function and just pass in the filtered characters okay so now let's type h and we see all of these either by name or house have an h in them we type a g here's all the gryffindors as well as anybody that has uh let's see a g in their name like gregory goyle if we type out a full name harry we see that shows up as well now the styling gets a little bit off but that's okay 
All right, so one thing that you might uh, have thought about is if I type in an a, a lowercase h, I'm not going to get Harry Potter. And the reason is Harry Potter starts with a capital H. And really, we don't really care about capitals versus not. So anytime you want to do a search where it's case insensitive, meaning if I type a capital H, it's still find a lowercase h and a capital H, or I type a lower h and I want to find both uppercase and lowercase h's. Anytime you want your case or your search to be case insensitive, typically what you do is you take the input search and you convert that to lowercase or uppercase. All right. And then you take the thing that you're comparing it with and convert that to uppercase and lowercase too. So what I'm saying is if the search string, if search string is H, then it should become a lowercase H. If the search string is lowercase h it should be lowercase h in the end so we want to take that the search string and convert it to lowercase then we want to convert the name to lowercase and then compare and then convert the house to lowercase and then compare also so the way this is going to look is we will take our search string and uh, we'll just do a dot uh, lowercase. I always forget uh, what the name of that function is. Let's see if that's if that's right. Let's log out the search string. Search string. All right, let's log that out when we type. Nope, not lowercase. Is it to lowercase? Yep, I think that's right. So if I type in capital H, notice all these H's are becoming lowercase. Okay, so that's cool. So then we also need to convert the name and the house to lowercase. So the way we can do this is we can just write in line, say to lower case. So convert that right in line to lowercase and then same thing with house. So to, to lower case, all right. And then now we'll get a case insensitive search. So if I type a capital H, Harry Potter still shows up. If I type a lowercase H, Harry Potter is still there. If I type a lowercase P, Potter is still there. If I type a capital P, he's still there as well. All right, so that is the basics of search functionality in JavaScript. Basically the key things here are, you need to be able to track when a user is typing into your search bar. Each time they type into the search bar, each time they do a key up, they change keys, they type something, or they technically they release a key. You want to get the search string that's in that input. So you want to grab that input. You want to then use it to search through your data somehow. So you might, uh, you might be making an API request to a backend to get filtered data. So they might actually do the filtered part. You might ju just be updating uh, your request to pass in a filter. In this case, we've got a reference to all of the Harry Potter characters here. Okay. And then we we call the filter on that array. So filter function and map function, those are some of those super, super useful Harry Potter functions or not, wow, not Harry Potter functions, array functions that you can use in JavaScript. So what we do is we iterate through each Harry Potter character. We get a reference to each one known as the character. And then we want to return true or false, whether or not this thing belongs inside of the filtered characters, whether or not it should still be there after we filter. And the way we check that in this case is to work. We are comparing two different things. E either the search string is in the name or it's in the house. And it doesn't matter whether it's uppercase or lowercase. Now, one thing you might be interested in is if you wanted to just search by name and not house, you could just get rid of that extra check. So this will get, uh, if I do G, this won't get Gryffindors. This will be only people with G's in their name, okay? Or uh, if I type in S, notice there's uh, only Slytherins that also have an S in their name. You could also change this to be uh, just the house. So if I wanted to see just people in the same house, I could type G. Now there's only people in Gryffindor. If I did Slytherin, S, only Slytherins, Hufflepuffs. Oh, actually there's an H in Slytherin anyway. So let's do HU, only one Hufflepuff. And then how many Ravenclaws do we have? Two Ravenclaws, Cho Chang and Luna Lovegood. So anyway, that's how you do search in JavaScript. It's actually not too bad once you get the basics and you can apply this to any application that you're working on. I hope you enjoyed it. I enjoyed working on this. I am a Harry Potter nerd, so I get to uh, play with the Harry Potter API. Always a fun time for me. Anyways, uh, I'm curious, have you ever built a search bar in any framework? Have you built it with vanilla JavaScript, React, uh, Angular, anything out there, jQuery, something older? If you have, let me know how this compares to how you did it. And if you have any other cool ways to do search in JavaScript. In the meantime, I will see you in the next video.